What's up, the Shot Love Road? Uh, my name is Kevin, uh, and this is going to be a new client of ours from um, Pandora Adventures, who does all kinds of sweet, um, uh, you know, outrigging to all these vehicles and takes clients all across the country and these really, really swanky um, uh, events. So, what he wants for us to do today uh, is actually a lot of things. This is going to be a complete custom build front to back. He wants new bumpers. Um, a front and a rear of a special design. We got a supercharged LS uh, that is fresh off the build, never even been run. We're gonna have to get that tuned. Hopefully we'll be making right around 600 horsepower, that's the plan. But before we get to that, we've got a lot of maintenance issues because this is an older truck. For instance, we got a lot of issues that he wants sorted out. The, the, the idea that for this truck is that he wants it to be a luxury race truck uh, that he can go wheel anywhere but race down the interstate if he wanted to as well. So he wants that to be luxury being the key word and with that you need an AC system. He thought it worked. We tried it out yeah, the, other, the other day and um, it doesn't appear to. I suspect it's this crushed indented uh, condenser. So we're gonna take a look at that. And we also have a myriad of other things to check out here. We can see we've got a, um, no offense to anybody I suppose, but we need to do something with this, with this one. <laughs> with this rat's nest of wiring hazard here. Uh, we'll probably put in some sort of um, multi-relay multi system that operates with, from a wireless switch. I don't know which one we're gonna use that, but we'll get to that. What else do we have? Um, when the motor's running, the tensioner is bouncing around like a little jackrabbit. We're gonna have to replace that. Uh, the body mounts are um, severely um, aged and uh, you know squished, so we're gonna replace those to make sure that his ride's as smooth as it can be. And um, just a few little knickknacks here and there, tightened up a few little things. So for the suspension on this uh, this badass truck, we're going to be replacing this old man emu system, which is fine for an everyday kind of kind of situation. But with this truck, we, he only wants the best this time around. So we're going with this Icon lift kit that he picked out, and this one's really going to suit his his uh, taste and his needs a lot better. For one, he'll be able to dial the compression um, back. Uh, to make it softer for when he's got clients in the truck and he's trying to keep everything comfortable or crank it all the way up to 10 and blitz down the desert like he wants to do. Uh, as well as uh, doing performance upgrades, we're going to be doing some simple maintenance issues. It is an older truck. He wants to make sure he can just fly on down when we're done with it, take it out to the racetrack and rip on it if he wants to. So uh, we're going to be replacing brakes, uh, the brake pads, perhaps the rotors too. Uh, and just doing a general health check on every bushing and wear part on the vehicle. All right, so today on Sean's LX450, we're gonna be doing a complete suspension install. So if you come right over here, we got uh, the front and rear Icon shocks. We got the front springs, the rear springs. Over there, we got the lower rear control arms and the track bar. Uh, most lift kit, major lift kits require an adjustable track bar so that you can adjust where the axle sits because once you lift it enough, that track bar throws the axle off. So most major lift kits will come with an adjustable track bar. Um, then over here we just have our bushing kits for all the shocks. These are for mounting the reservoirs. And um, this is actually a caster plate for the front. And what caster actually is, is the steering angle. So zero degrees caster is actually straight up and down. Then you got positive and negative. And that affects the way the wheels go whenever you turn. Uh, so that's what we'll be doing today. We'll get all of this done and uh, then we'll show you the results. So before we put our shocks and our springs in, there's actually several modifications we're gonna have to do to the uh, LX450 frame and whatnot. So I guess uh, once he's done running that right there, we'll go over there, we'll take a look at what we got. Um, I'll show you everything we are gonna have to do. And it's quite a bit of work, but this thing should be awesome once we're done. All right, so all the modifications we gotta go through include um, up here where the radial arms mount to the frame, we had to weld in some plates here that move the bolt an inch forward. That way we can make a little bit more clearance for when we put bigger tires on this thing. Um, also to make clearance for the tie rod, we had to mill out 3 16 of an inch here and on the other side. Um, then down here, uh, what our fabricator Catlin was just welding in. 
is these caster plates here and basically what that does is roll the axle um, back. It rolls the axle back to correct the pinion angle. Um, let's see. Then we've had to put in extended bump stops here. Just a extension here. Um, we've got another tie rod that we're going to put in. We had to, on the other side, come around over here. Yeah, we had to reinforce the frame here because they have a tendency to crack under a lot of stress. So there's a plate on this side where the steering box mounts and a plate on the other side to reinforce the whole section of frame here. Also, the support bar here, we finished the welds all the way around because they're stitched on both sides from the factory. So we welded that all the way across to keep this from cracking here as well. Um, we're also in the process of taking the hubs apart. We're gonna replace a bunch of the bearings and basically just do a bunch of uh, premature maintenance uh, to keep everything from breaking. Um, and that's pretty much it on the front. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it, a lot of prepping, a lot of cutting. Um, but pretty much at this point, we're almost done with that. And then we're just gonna go ahead and start putting the springs and the shocks in. Okay, everybody, we are still working on this project truck that we've been doing for some time. We had a bunch of problems. Uh, well, not really problems. We just didn't understand what we had. Um, so the, the customer of ours had this motor built uh, outside of our shop. He just brought it over to us and kind of found out it was built for more than 800 horsepower. And it's got a low compression ratio. And this blower that he's got on there is relatively small. So um, we've had to reduce the pulley size just to get five pounds of boost. So now that we're finally seeing boost, I've got the gauges hooked up. We did a lot of work here. I'll show you some of the work we did in here. We, we changed headers. We did the full exhaust and a custom intake. I made him a custom um, can in intake uh, that has a straight through design instead of that vacuum cleaner style swirly deal that the old, the old straight six used. Uh, so it goes directly into the snorkel. And from what I can tell, we're not losing any boost at least. I'm sure we'll probably lose a little horsepower because it's like sucking a straw running a marathon. Um, other than that, we cleaned up all the electrical. We really like how that turned out. Got the AC working, got the heater working, fixed two oil leaks. Uh, if you can come around on this other side, you'll see the headers that we've installed. We had to do a custom exhaust on that as well. So pretty much since the last time you've seen it, everything's been redone performance-wise. And we're hoping that our man Jeff is so we got some more horsepower for us. We just ran a, um, one run, and we haven't tuned it yet, but we're already seeing close to 100, po yeah. 100 horsepower increase. I think it was 270, 278, now we're at 362. I mean, not almost, 100, 90 horsepower, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pleased so far. I think we can push it closer to 400, though. That's great. Well, you know where you are at least. Yeah. Well, so I mean, let's let's do the delta here. We went from 270 to 370. Snorkel to snorkel. Mm -hmm. And what did we do last time without the snorkel? After it was 330. So we went from 330 to 409. So that was about still about 80 horsepower. Yeah. This motor was delivered to us, finished, ready to race. Yeah. Gonna find out it made 270 horsepower. So. We did a lot of research, tried to figure out what was wrong, replaced a lot of parts, and to our credit, we did gain 100 horsepower, which seems like a lot, but whenever your motor is supposed to be, you know, putting down 500 and you only did 270, it's, it's kind of a little underwhelming still, but all in all, I mean, he's got a 370 wheel horsepower truck just the way it sits right now. If he takes off that stupid snorkel, um, we, it was 409, is that right? Yep, yep. So 409 horsepower to the wheels, that's almost 500 at the crank, which, hey, that's that's not bad. So I feel like we did our job, despite the fact that it's not like a 700, 700 horsepower bruiser. Yeah. It runs nice, completely capable, so. Seen it? It's wet, we're not going crazy. <laughs> See you next time. Yeah.
the next episode of how to not make horsepower. <laughs>